Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, welcome back to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me virtually, we have Lawrence Deloach. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? And we got Luke Trevisi, uh, top-notch Luke in the building still. Oh, yeah. Still he here. is full fuck boy and ready for it. I, where the hoes at? Oh. Yo, the, <laughs> every day your hair gets longer, I notice you're also wearing longer necklaces. Yeah, the, the necklaces get longer, too. That's that. That is the true growth of your fuckboyness. Is that it's, you went from just having it real choked up here to now you're letting it hang, bro. Just letting it hang now. It's going. <laughs> that <laughs> stash is even like filled in. I yeah, man. It's it's starting. It's starting to evolve. It's getting scary. I don't know if I'll be able to go back. Wait, I'm the only one that has not switched to my look, Lawrence. You have hair now, and like yeah. are, are really letting that fly. And then we got. <laughs> it's, it's Looks great. Look. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you do look younger. And, like, you're, like, it's, like, filling in, yeah. like, pause. Like, I don't know how to say it, but, like, you're starting to, wet, like, wear the hair. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate Hell it. yeah. Well, no, you can't thank take you. a compliment. Look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I can't. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, going back to uh, things that – um. Lawrence was on before anyone else. We got to talk about these unions because, like, now that we have the full look and we see the other sneakers and stuff, like, they hid this yeah. tongue, bro. How did they hide this tongue in every photo bef- up until this point? Well, that was that was the I think the goal right there to hide the tongue to get people to shit on it, and then they do. And then once the tongue comes out, there's a there's a 180. Now a lot of people still don't like the shoe, but me personally, I, I said from day one, I'm like, it's not it's not the worst shoe. I mean, it's not is it um. Is it an all-time great Jordan Ford? No, but I think it's uh, it's solid. And I think what the problem was, a they had such a classic with the Union ones, following mm-hmm. up with the fours. You know, no, it makes sense. It literally, though. I mean, look, I'm not gonna say I'm all the way 180 on these, but I did flip a little in my head once I saw that there's a tongue. The guavas mm-hmm. are even better now. I I mean, look, I'm still not like all the way on those, but. They are much better with a tongue. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm actually a fan. I like the guavas. I think they're uh, something different about them. Yeah. They have a, uh, they have this, like, I don't know if it's like this flea market fake look to them. Yeah. That makes sense. But it definitely, uh, it's, it's, I like the, the guava colorway. It, it, it pops a lot more than the, the black joints. You know what I mean? They look like fucking birthday cakes for your feet, man. That's what, yes, a funfetti type of cake, man. They do yes. look like birthday cake. <laughs> That's Bro, very every day's your birthday when you're wearing Union 4s. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, you got that guava cake, bro? <laughs> guava cake I, does sound nice. I think, yeah, I think the, I think the big issue was, obviously, it's, it's tough to follow. I mean, uh, you know, in general, Jordan 1s are the, the highest of the highs in terms of when it comes to Jordans, in terms of what they do with collabs and and color blocking, but when you get to a four, it, it does become a little tough. Uh, people weren't fans of the, the tongue. I mean, that was a huge thing. No, the tongue was a huge problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is, I mean, once again, it, once you once you uh, take the stitching out of the tongue, then yeah, it, it, you can't fold it back. But at the end of the day, I think uh, I think the sneaker looks great with the tongue, and uh, I'm excited. Hopefully, I mean, this is one of those pairs that I definitely don't want to strike out on. Uh, I'm looking forward to. I hit my man at uh, Jordan to be like, yo, what's good with those blacks? Can I get the black pair? And he was like, no, nah, I, I kind of want the pink. So you, uh, you got to sit uh, out. The pinks are your mortal enemy now, dude. Dude, they are. And I'm like, I don't think I, don't think I deserve this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah the, the guavas are, I mean, they're, uh, they're, they're definitely unique, man. And don't even sleep on the, the Deltas in the what? The Zoom 92? The, actually, all right. So the Deltas can get, get out of here. I'm cool on the Deltas. But mm-hmm. the Zoom 92s are actually really nice. Yeah, Zoom 92s have a little something to them. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, you know, it's not you know, a decent shoe. These uh, I would shoot for. These are, like, these are like streamlined basketball sneakers that I could wear casually. Like, these kind of fit, like, on my mm-hmm. foot. Mm-hmm. I do I do like these 92s. Yeah, the, the, them Deltas. Wait, let's go take a peek at these Deltas here for a second, though, because I don't want to, like, take away. Because these aren't a bad shoe. Just compared to the other three, like, I don't know who's going to, like, go for these. These aren't bad either, though. They're, they're yeah, no, I, I like these. These aren't bad. No, they're fine. 
It's just like compared to the other ones. I mean, the, the only thing good about this is the union tags, that, that uh, tongue tag and that little label right there. That's it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, man, Union definitely, uh, they definitely, they did their thing. I mean, they did their thing on the force. I'm still, you know, I'm such a, a, a I love the Union 180s. I'm always going to, I have, I still have my pair 180s from 15 years ago. I'm mad at myself for not getting the, the Union ones when they were at a reasonable resale, when I could have made a couple of things happen. Uh, these I'm going to definitely, I think these are more retailer busts. Uh, but they're definitely a, a, a shoe that you want to have. Retail is high. Retail is 250 But, you know, obviously yeah. people have shown that if they feel like they can make some money off it, they, it doesn't matter. Yep. Um, but, yeah, man. Yeah, that's it's definitely the way to go. Um, so, I mean, Lawrence, I, apo- I apologize for my initial thoughts on your enjoying the sneaker. I have to give that to you. No, nah, I enjoyed it, man. We we're gonna, like I said, the, the guavas are the Union LA exclusive, like the uh, like the black, I mean, like the blue and uh, red uh, Union ones. So mm-hmm. they're gonna be, and then the black ones are gonna be the sneakers pair as well as the Union pair. Um, I think, like I said, I think the the Union exclusives are a little bit better, but no, you're right. I mean, I'm still on the black side, but I mean, I get it. I understand where you're coming from. Um. But just to move forward here, and I, because this could go awry, we got to be careful on this topic, but we got to go over these Kanye tweets because he just gave a lot of, he, it's amazing how he can give a lot of nothing and everything at the same time. He gives a lot of information on these tweets, man. I mean, I guess the most prevalent um, that I'm most excited about here is that they're going to have a Yeezy D Rose, or at least he's alleging that like this uh, soul here, let me share my screen. This soul picture that he got going on here is going to be for his, sneaker this yeah. shit is crazy bro the tooling on these soles that have been going on lately is fucking wild yeah if you get something stuck in there though <sighs> yeah i mean but it was the same with like the adidas 4d shit like 3d right. printed soul i mean like all this shit is fucking nuts everything got holes in it now everything like looks like it's a fucking uh like a uh slide at a water park you know what i mean I, everything just looks nuts to me yeah these look like uh you know tripe no, what's that? It's like uh, intestinal lining. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think once again, I think you know a lot of this stuff that you know, especially like with the D Rose, I would love to see that. But with Kanye's track record, who knows if that you know if that's gonna happen for D Rose? I know. Um, we have the the Yeezy Quantum, the basketball sneaker, but they haven't yep. been released in high quant- enough quantities for people to really play ball in them like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I mean, we shall see. I don't know. I, I take Kanye's tweets with a grain of salt now at this point. I mean, like, look at even like this like weird booty slipper that's been dipped in like whatever. I mean, this shit is just crazy. Like, this is cool. It I looks really like cardboard with a sock on it, honestly. Yeah, kind of. I like he's doing some real interesting things, and like you gotta remember, like he was trying to get sustainable with that uh, the foam runner with the algae and shit. Yeah, like there's algae in the foam runner. So who knows what some of this stuff is gonna have on it? But I'm I really hope that they continue this uh, trend that I guess PJ Tucker is gonna get a lot of credit for because like designer collab basketball shoes are mm-hmm. like gonna like this is the fusion of a lot of things that we cover every week all in one thing. Right. Makes our lives much easier. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but like, so you get a, because it's basically a triple label, all these fear of God, PJ Tucker, Nikes, right. Kanye West, Derek Rose, Adidas. Like we've, we've talked about triple labels before and how can, they can like be bad or be good based on like who the names are on the shoe. But like things at that caliber are kind of crazy. If you ask me, I don't know how you guys feel. And then like, damn, some of this shit just looks, I don't know about like this graffiti car shit. Like this is all weird. But then, yeah, he's even shouting out vision. Like, oh man, all over the place here. I mean, do you guys have any other thoughts about what's going on in here? Cause like, there's just a lot like these sketches, like these weird pictures of pants. I don't even, <laughs> it's crazy. I just, I am a fan of the fact that he took a picture of a hobby Japan, um, fucking Gundam making magazine. And he put that in this fucking tweet thread. I'm very happy about that. I, mean, I, really, I really don't have much of a comment, man. He's just, it's just, you know, Kanye is just, you know, machine gun tweeting. 
it you know it kind of just gets a little annoying after it's a it oh i don't even i don't even think i follow him but it's just kind of like uh let's, let's talk about something i mean hopefully he's doing all right man he seemed happy he was in a video with his daughter you know that stuff but like all this other shit i don't really care about kind of, it's you know where's the album where's donda like that was yeah exactly yeah like, that's like that's all more this, that i care about that's what i'm saying all of this shit that he's doing it's like all right bro where's the stuff that you said you were going to deliver to us man so i think because i mean this the the fact that he posted this vision shit is so cool to me because vision was one of like the first brands that i was like not i don't want to say aware of but like when i coming into this like space and like starting to care about clothing and shit vision was one of those brands where i was just like oh that's some cool shit and i think it's a lot it's beyond a lot of people's years because like i mean luke before the pod you were saying that you weren't really familiar ali like nope because this is like more skate shit, you were kind of like, oh, I'm, I don't know. But like Vision was like early 80s, like Stussy type of brand. You know what I mean? So like Vision was, yeah, Vision was like the first Cali brand where I was like, yo, I want that. But it all goes back to skating. Like, I think this is the first time I saw a street in wear next to each other for like a cultural point of reference. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, like, Vision might have coined the term streetwear. I might be out of pocket with that, but that's it's just crazy to see where he's pulling all this stuff from. I, yeah, I, could, I mean, I can see the thought process. Yeah. Um, Yellow wave runners. And then okay. just to follow up on that, because this I was just put onto this Instagram, Easy Influence. Um, I mean, as far as, like, Easy-related stuff, they seem pretty low on the totem pole. But, I mean, they just do a good job of curating all this stuff and do, like, a digestible information on, like, yeah, who just fucking like what did you say machine gun tweets he just machine gun tweets chris yeah that's true this is really cool so easy influence making it very digestible did, did, um, they, did they pay you to say that or no that no like, no pay no ad no ad revenue there i just liked it yeah. actually the, one of the dudes uh i work with on the side we're doing like some sneaker project stuff he was the one that hit me with this he's like yo this is a, just a good influence uh i mean not influ like reference point for inspiration so i was looking at this shit they just do a good job curating all that stuff they paid um, me fifty thousand dollars to tell Chris's friend about it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how ads are gonna work now. Is like that you have to incept. <laughs> yeah, you have to incept it into somebody else for them to incept it into you. That's, that's funny. funny, bro. <laughs> so, so we, uh, you know, uh, off of off of Kanye because I felt like we. Uh, <laughs> You're like, you could, you, Lawrence is like, let's get this out of the way. Out of yeah, the way. Chris. Chris wanted to talk about it. I, I, Lawrence Delos did not give zero fucks about Kanye West. And <laughs> because yeah. Because if he does not drop an album, it's like, all right, come on, you know, what's the deal? So, <laughs> uh, we had uh, we had two pairs of Jordan ones that came out over the last couple of days. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. women uh satin snakeskin and the uh japan edition um silver uh jordan ones yep um thoughts on either one of them love the snakeskin yeah. um i wish it was just a different color i just wish the color blocking was just a little different maybe like keep the snake red like there's just something about it that's a little off but it's still a great shoe i like it a lot yeah, I like the women's shoe. I like the the uh, the Japan editions only because uh, if you put purple laces on them, they're like uh, knockoff dinosaur juniors. So I like that. Uh, That's it. Funny That's the story. Only thing I like about them. Funny story. If, um, and not to change this topic, man. I, I my skate shop back in the days, man. I had got a pair of dinosaur juniors, uh, but they were a size eleven because they did not have a twelve or an eleven and a half. God and damn. I tried to make that 11 work for a little oh, while. Oh, no. Oh, you, no way. It did not. It just would not work at oh. all. This you know, what, we never really discussed buying the wrong size. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that before, too, believe We've it. We've all done it. Yeah. You, I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm so anal about sneakers now that, like, everything has to be a 12. Like, it's like, I'm a 12. Like, I, like, mentally, if I get an 11 and a half, I'm like, I can't, I'm not going to, it's not going to work. <laughs> that half size is going to fuck me up so bad. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. And, and, and regards to the, uh, the metallic silver joints, I, I, you know, it's, it's such a, like I said, this has been such a weird time, man, in regards to, <laughs> excuse me, in terms Bless of, you. Uh, oh, he got it. <laughs> In terms of sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he got it. <laughs> oh, he COVID. 
uh, in terms of, uh, you know, sneakers selling out once again, because everything is pretty much online. I definitely wanted a pair of the metallic silvers. I actually got a pair of the snakeskin. So I'm debating on whether to try to, you know, flip, flip or like trade or just get to the point where I'm just like, fuck it. I don't care about this, uh, the metallic silvers and just flip my snakes because they didn't come in my size. So what size did you get? I got a women's 10 and a half. Size nine. That's my Ten size, nine. my friend. Size nine. So um, I am probably. So, uh, Chris, make a deal. <laughs> Off mic. I can't let the listeners know my negotiation skills. Yeah. Well, please, gonna... Lawrence, please, can I have these, please? If, if oh, negotiation... Just hook me up. <laughs> if, if your negotiation skills can give me some metallic silvers, then yeah. But if not, then, you know, we'll, we'll talk. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I you know I actually like those. I mean, these are you know these type of sneakers. These are two thousand one. These bring me back to you know being a young kid in high school, and um, and I you know things like this was like seventy dollars. You know, I remember, I remember the black and red and the royals uh came out in two thousand one. I think I think they were like seventy eighty bucks, bro. You know what I mean for and they were yeah. the numbered edition. And people didn't really wear Jordan ones, you know, back Word. then. People did not give a fuck about a Jordan one. It was, it was literally Air Force ones and everything else. But Jordan ones were not, you know. And I still have my black, my 2001 black and reds, like somewhere in my crib, because yeah. they were such a, a a great sneaker for me in high school, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. 2001 was a great year for me. I was walking. I was talking for the first time. It was I know. pretty great. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Lawrence, you're so old. I mean, uh, yo, I, I learned that Asians were good at math. <laughs> That's what I learned that. And I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I mean, well, you know, I was, I was, I was a baby. I was still a kid, but I mean, yeah, I was in high school when it was, when the 2001s came out. And I, that's why I just laugh at like shit now, you know, how crazy it is to get everything. Uh, because, you know, something like this, you know, even though it was a Japan exclusive, it, if it was in the U.S., it would have sat, you know? Yeah. And now these are flying and they're doing, you know, 350 for, for a shoe. That's why I'm just like, I'm, I might honestly just wait for the sneakers pairs to come in this this week. And then just fucking buy, and then and then just off those to offset the cost. Cause I'm like, I am. I, I mean, bro, if you want them, just get them, bro. I mean, yeah, I, I do, I do want them, but I mean, you know, it's like one of those things where you're like, I don't really like paying resale for shit. I don't, I hate resale, hate it. Yeah, but like if you trade the snakeskins, like you're not really buying for, you know what I mean? You're yeah, not really resale buying. You're like, you're just trading. Plus we in a, yeah, I think I think honestly, I think both of these have the ability and I, I think I talked to Luke off, off uh you know, off you know, on a text and I was like, you know, these Jordan ones, man, just continue to to just rise. Like, you know, every Jordan one in the last like six months for the most part have has just shot up. Yeah. I think you might I think you might have mentioned it in the text L, but this is like such I think just like a delayed reaction from the doc and on well, top now it's of the on high, Netflix. Well, I think that's two different things. I think when we talk about uh, when we talk about certain Jordans, I, you know, I, I talk about the doc. I was talking about like the the OG colorways, like the you know the Concords and yep. you know black and red yeah. fours, white and cement fours, white. You know, those type of shoes have shot the fuck up since the uh, the Chicago Bulls documentary. Um, but it just feels like a lot of the Jordan ones uh, have have just increased whether you know whatever color it is it's you know in, in, in six months you know they're 100 200 extra than what you, you know and it yeah. depends on obviously the size but we're in an interesting time man where gentry is you know he's trying to take it back to 2012 where general releases just sell out man no actually you know what what's now that you now that you say that we could segue into a, um there was a question on the discord about like selling the champs colors shoe yes um because uh, like that's a general release shoe that now you could sell for three hundred dollars right mm -hmm. so i mean what i is that a keep situation or you sell he's he's asking okay so uh read the, read, the, read the question don't i got you it. yeah akron info asked uh may i please have a second opinion on champs dunks i have a ds pair and they're a decent price on the market right now but i'm unsure how far this dunk craze will be going into winter, especially when compared to uh, better CWS 
that are going for way more colorways that are going for more uh if i should let them go right now or hold a bit longer wants to know basically should he hold or should he sell he's got 300 dollar dunks right now um and this is a tough one because like if there's a picture of travis in the um, a week from now that, right. that's at least 500 I mean, yeah, but if, if Travis doesn't wear a general release dunk, then, you know, then obviously then he has to play the long game. Uh, I feel like, obviously, out of all the, the general release dunks that's come out so far, whether it's Kentucky, Syracuse, St. John's, Brazil's, Champs, these are obviously the least desired colorway. Yeah. Um, I will say it just feels like um, – it feels like these are what, like a month or two old. Like these are, yeah, like less, like less than a month old. I would continue to, I would continue to hold. I mean, it's always the 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 thing. If you need the money, then yeah, get rid yeah. of them. But if not, I mean, you know, obviously, I just feel like, like Syracuse and Kentucky's. Obviously, when they came out in March, a month later, they were you know, maybe a hundred over retail. I think, no, like 130, 140 over retail for the most part. And it didn't, it took maybe three, four months for them to, not three, I'm sorry. It took maybe three months for them to just like shoot up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel it, the, the St. John's had that residual like automatically because the Kentuckys and the Syracuse were so high that the St. John's stayed high. Also just like that red and white. Colorway well, well, that's what I'm nice. saying. It, yeah. it, it, but it's a Syracuse, and it's the same principle of a Syracuse in Kentucky. Right. So just, it definitely yeah. it it automatically stays high. Absolutely. The, the Brazil, because the Brazils were like really coveted, like they for the most part stayed high. These, I see, I could see eventually the you know I don't know what you know what he's looking for if he's trying to get the four or five hundred like the yeah. Syracuse and Kentuckys, but. If you like, I said, I mean, getting you know two thirty, two forty for a shoe that you paid a hundred dollars for, it's not a bad flip. Mm-hmm. No, um, it's not. But like, look at all like every general release dunk this year is like. I mean, I look at plums right now. Plums started out obviously at a hundred dollars. Now them shits is four fifty, five hundred, six hundred dollars for depending on each size. So, right. I just would play a long game with with the with the dunks, man. Yeah, I would. I would. That. I mean, that seems to be the only real move now, because mm-hmm. like you never know what's gonna go. And even if they do drop, it's still a fucking good sneaker that you yeah. can wear if you decide. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say the same thing. Yeah, you're not. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no. It's just uh, if you wanted to, the other option is like you you sell these and you if you're trying to hold something for a long period of time. Then you get then like you trade these and see if you can find something else that might uh, garner more profit later on, right? Because mm-hmm. the dunks are a little bit they're like an iffy market. That's why he's even asking in the first place. Yeah, they're kind of an iffy market. Well, right I don't now. think it's a, I don't think it's an iffy market. I mean, right now, I think for the next at least year or so, like you're like it's not a fucking iffy market. It's, it's yeah, dunks are in. Dunk dunk train right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not like in two weeks everyone's gonna be like ah they're gonna be off the dunk train. I mean no, there's but I feel like, yeah, obviously this is the, out of all the dunks that's released so far out of those five or whatever that, that's come out of the general uh, pack or whatever, general release joints, those are the least coveted. But I would still just hold, man. It's a hold yeah. for me. Definitely yeah. a hold. Hold. If you, if you don't need the money right now, just hold on to them. But if you, if you need the mo- like, listen, if you got to pay for groceries or some shit, you yeah. know, get, sell the shoes. Also, man, like people forget that like breaking out a shoe four years later is like a fucking great feeling. Like, yeah. If it doesn't sell, and then you're finally like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna wear them." Like, and then people who know what's up are gonna go, "Oh, damn, those are like night. Nice. You yeah. just break those out. Like, that's yeah, also exactly. good. Fi- I love that shit. Such Let, a good flex. Let's let's keep it real. Who? How many? All right. I want to talk about that too. Since we since you said that, you how many sneakers that you break out years later? Like. Who, who really notices this? Like, who notices that? It, it's No, it's the same thing <laughs> that we've always fancy. talked about. It's it's do, other dudes just going like, yo. Yeah. But mm-hmm. as we, as not, like, on paper good sounding as that is, you do feel good. Like, no, can, you can't I've, tell me, I've like. Had, I've had girls, when I when I bust out a new pair of shoes, be like, oh, those are nice, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, like, as far as, like, people going, yo, I can't believe you have the fucking, the champion dunks, I'd be, I wouldn't. That'd be dudes. Yeah, it's I mean, only dudes. It's, you know, it's really dudes. I mean, but at the same time, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Like, you know, a lot of times, um, 
certain sneakers, you know, they, you know, in four or five years. I give you extra swagger points, man. But then, you know, you, I mean, certain sneakers in four or five years, you may not even. Bro, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about, but there's certain sneakers in five years that you may look at completely differently and be like, oh, man, what the fuck was I thinking? That's true, too. That's also true. I I think, but like I said, I think long story short, uh, we hold. Yeah, that's, it's a hold for me, dog. Hold. I mean, damn. I was just talking to um, Coscarelli, former guest, about the dunk craze shit. And, like, it is just so befuddling to think about the history. I know we kind of say this every week now, but there's, like, a $100 shoe. Dude, there's pictures uh, floating around of, like, CCS catalogs back from, like, the early 2000s oh, where, like, this shoe was on sale for 50 heart, bucks. Dude. Yeah, it breaks man. my heart. Like, and I know I have one of those CCS catalogs at my mom's house somewhere. There's, like, definitely, a, like, a pile of my skate shit that, like, there's a stack of those catalogs. I used to carry those around. And then I was not looking at the dunks. I will tell you that. I will be the first to admit, like, all of that Nike shit back then, I was like, get this out of this catalog. This shit sucks. Yes. Um, <laughs> that, but that's, that's, where, that's where we're at right now. It's, it, we talk about it all the time, but it's, it's you know, it, it, it's only, Nike is only continuing. Like, they're releasing uh, the Sambas in a couple of weeks. They're, uh, the Sambas, they're releasing uh, a lot. The Michigan, the Iowas, like, they're – they're they're definitely uh they're about to hit people continuously with more you know with more yeah Yeah. with covid you know because you really can't get into a store like or you know because it's harder you know a lot of stores aren't getting certain sneakers then it becomes a now your only option is sneakers or some bullshit online raffle yeah you know, and um, we're going to see, like I said, it's the dunk craze is just like, they're just, they're continuing. They're going to milk the shit out of this until, you know, they, they can't anymore, which is, I, I don't, I see this being for a little while. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just to switch topics to kind of what you were saying, um, speaking of milking pause, um, Nike is doing a great job of, because uh, they have those Kobe's coming out. And I think they like respectfully waited for a good amount of time. And wait and waited for good retros and no now good new colors to come out too. Holy and shit! What? You're, the stutter there? You are trying to dodge laser beams right here. I'm just trying to be real careful. Yeah. No, nah, I, I was I was listening to him too. The way he said milk, milk and Kobe. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah, I like, just it was a bad segue. Okay, yeah, I missed like, that shot. Fu- Hold on. No, I was listening to that too. I was wild. I was like, okay, Chris, tread lightly, bro. All right, but, Chris yeah, is about to get canceled in three, two, one. <laughs> No, no, but I, we got uh, three colorways coming out. Right. Mm-hmm. Pull these him, puppies baby. up. Um, so we got the big stage. Uh, we got uh, Lakers, and we got these uh, forest greens. Forest green. And then, um, oh, you were saying something about P.J. Tucker is going to get one. Supposedly, P.J. Tucker is uh, supposed to get yeah. a, 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 col- uh, a Kobe uh, 5 colorway. Um, it's going to be very, which is awesome. And I, and I hate to say it this way, but it's going to be great that the fact that Mamba Day, which is August 24th, will be inside of the NBA bubble. So the NBA does get to do a proper tribute to one of the t- greatest players of all time. Easily yeah. top five. Top 10. Now I'm a Kobe Ooh. fan. Ooh. Top 10. Top t- now listen, I, I, I'm not, listen, we're not going to debate. We're not going to uh, debate. But you and numbers, I have done this too many times. But I'm just saying, he's one of he's one of the greatest players to ever touch a basketball. Yes. But like I said, the fact that the NBA will be in in playoff mode and on Mamba Day, there will be the proper tribute to you know arguably the greatest Laker of all time. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I just hope that Nike uh, you know makes these somewhat available and allows the correct people to get their hands on them, which, you know, when I say correct people, I mean people who aren't resellers and who kind of, you, who want the shoe. I mean, and, or if they do release them, make them widely available. So, because I feel like I, we saw it with, with his death and where people just continuously figured out they were going to price gouge people on items that, you know, Kobe items that, you know, you can find at, you know, at retail or slightly over retail, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and I think that's very disheartening, but I uh, I am looking forward to hopefully uh, grabbing a pair of. And I'm like I said, I, I love like I love Kobe sneakers to play ball in. I, I played ball in a few of them, and and I'm definitely looking forward to you know. Which one do you like the most, L? Uh, between the uh, I think the Forest Greens are, are really nice. I think yeah, the those are super strong. 
the but you know, I think uh those two um, What's that? the other one? The big stage. Okay. Uh, Actually, you know what? I'm usually well. First off, it's a mishmash shoe, so I'm not all the way on it. But like, I out of all like the writing looking ones, like the ones that looks like it has like written stuff all over it, like yeah. even compared to like uh, the Braun graffitis, like these are actually really nice. Yeah, these are clean. I, I like actually, I like the Lakers one, but that's only because they remind me of uh, the Maspy era, mm. the Mas Kobe. Like it, it reminds me a really a lot of that like era of Kobe. I actually had um, a pair of uh, the I believe it was Kobe Elevens. They were um, they were IDs, and I think it might have been tens or Elevens. And you can use that same print. Uh, it was that because that was like the final. Um, it was like his last season or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, I had got them, and I just was like, ah, I'm not gonna play ball in these, mm -hmm. and I didn't keep them. But um, yeah, man, I, you know it's. Um, fucking crazy man it really is it's yeah i'm pretty excited that they get to do that right you definitely get to do it right we're gonna see like i said we I, i'm looking at, at the uh the nba bubble right now i'm looking at the regular season games and a lot of players uh are wearing kobe fives to hoop in yeah uh which i think if you if you've ever if you play ball you play ball in kobe's like from kobe five six seven and eight they're all very similar models but they all are are, are amazing uh responsive sneakers on the basketball court so wait quick side note because i the game the game schedule is is crazy to me like i there's so many games happening at weird times i haven't been able to keep up like so who's doing well and who's not i seen that elite lakers aren't doing like so great but yeah yeah i think uh in terms of the the nba bubble i think a lot of teams are just kind of using these eight games uh the playoff teams are trying to get their you know teams healthy uh you know get their feet wet again uh, there are certain teams who the Phoenix Suns they look amazing. Uh, shout out to Devin Booker and and mm -hmm. DeAndre Ayton they look great. Um, the Indiana Pacers there's T.J. Warren he's a good guy he's playing well. Uh, your your Celtics you know they're they're figuring it out. It's you know the playoffs start I think uh, I think like a week or or like eight or nine days from now so we shall uh, we shall see. Is it me or is the game schedule crazy? I feel like they're playing games on Sunday at 1 p.m. I'm like not used to it. Yeah, because remember, it, you know, and, and with basketball, you know, back in the days, if you play on the West Coast, you know, they're three hours behind. So you're going yeah. to be a little different. You know, but every, everything is centralized in Orlando. So they have to get, you know, there's only, I think, two or three locations where these games can be played. So they have to kind of space it out so that, yeah. you know, they can clean the arena, you know, uh, sanitize and then, you know, Purell that whole bitch. Yeah. Fucking Lysol everything. <laughs> I can't believe they haven't canceled baseball either. I know we're kind of just doing a sports thing now, but like that, there was like four Atlanta Braves that tested positive. Like, bro, just shut that shit down. Everyone got to be a bubble now. NBA did it right. Well, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think baseball is, uh, they incorrect. Uh, but once again, it's, it becomes down to fucking the TV money, man. The, the money, yeah. they, you know, the yeah. revenue and, and we're going to see that same thing with football in a month where you can't tell me that players aren't going to, you know, come down with COVID and, and it's just going to be a bad look for the sport. But Yeah. Yep. I mean, speaking of making money, um, round two is opening again, finally in uh, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Um I, I guess this is going to be the first uh, BST, like, a you know, this consignment place that's, like, back and open, kind mm -hmm. of, um, which is cool to see stuff get to, back to normal. It's also cool for, like, Sean to actually just, like, have his store back and shit after, like, that looting. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you – which if this was open near us, would you guys go there? Yeah, why not? Uh, just because of outside? Probably, yeah, probably not. Probably not. I don't really like going outside – uh, for many things and what like it's only necessities for me for the most part uh, I did go and do an open mic for the first time and uh, in like four months and I was like uh, yeah I can't I can't do this it, I don't feel comfortable going outside like that um I I would say I, I mean well first congratulations Luke on you know getting back on a microphone uh, yeah. and yeah. doing what you love uh second I mean there's a round two in New York City, you know, and I haven't gone to it, but I mean, mm -hmm. what I, if I needed to go, I would go. I mean, I, 
I've gone to department stores in New York. Uh, it's been a little, a little interesting in terms of, you know, it, but it, I treat it like, I think you got to treat it like driving, man. You, you can't, you can't um, predict or you can't see what other people are going to do. You can only like really make sure you're a good yeah, driver. Yeah, you're good. That's all. Yeah. And I, I think that sucks that they'll, they'll put it like that, but. Yeah, no, that's that's actually a great analogy. I've never heard anyone put it like that. It, yeah, it is. It is like that. As long as you just make sure you do your shit. Yeah. I mean, you can only, you know, what I mean, you can't, you can't stop a drunk driver, but you know, what I mean, you can make sure, you know, at the end of the day, that you put your seatbelt on, you do the limit, you keep, you know, your mm -hmm. passenger safe. And I think that's it, man. So if I had to go, like, if I saw something at round two, if they posted something, and I felt like, oh man, I want, like, I would fucking go. Yeah. That's what's I hear up. You. Yeah, no, I'm just happy that like uh, you know, this it's a normal thing has happened now. Like we have a a normal thing has come back. I just That's always true. like when normal shit is happening again. Have you guys gone to any uh like retail stores or you haven't? So when uh I went with uh Coscarelli to like the Bed Bath and Beyond over in like Industry City or whatever, and they mm -hmm. happen to have like that uh off Saks Fifth. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and that's the first store I went into and uh, my dumbass, I didn't even think about it. I was like trying shit on and they, I got yelled at. They're like, yo, don't try anything on dumbass. I'm like, oh shit. I can mm -hmm. realize. Mm -hmm. So it's weird to be in a store and like look at stuff and be like cons and consider it, like mm -hmm. think about it, but then I can't try it on. So it's like, it, it's kind of like, it's worse than online shopping because I have it in front of me, but I can't even really test it. I can feel yeah. it. I can be like, oh, all right, but checking the fit, I can't even do it. Last time I went out shopping was uh, Tenant. That was the last time. Oh, you, I, that's true. I, me and Luke did go to Tenant real quick. I went over there to say what up. Um, he bought some shorts, but I don't really consider that like retail. Uh, that's not like shopping. But like, yeah, I don't really. No, I don't really shop like that. If I if I'm going if I'm going out, I I know what I'm getting. I go mm -hmm. and I get it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to wait for shipping or whatever it is. Well, that's the thing, and I feel like a lot of a lot of these uh, stores, you know, they are doing the, you know, a lot of people are doing online shopping because it makes everything super easy. Uh, I'm I'm of the like I don't mind online shopping, but I've always been on the experience of fuck it, I want to go, like I want to feel it, I want to try it on, I want to see what it's about. But you know, in terms of trying on clothes, I, you know, that I really, you know, I know a lot of stores say they they're making changes and and keeping people say I get a little. A little antsy about that, but I mean, it, it's it's interesting to think about like not being able to like look because Lawrence, you've ordered stuff online and like tried it on, been like, yeah, nah. But like that is a like two month to a two uh, two week to a two month process to get that and evaluate it and see. Like, it's, yeah, it's a headache. It's such a like all this stuff is going to be such a prolonged system now. Like, I don't know if I'm really going to buy shit unless I already know. Like, I don't think I'm really going to be, like, trying shit out online shopping. I That I agree with you on in terms of, like like you said, it can be a little, it can be a process. I mean, sometimes you have to be willing to, to wait for, you know, the stuff. And then, you know, then it, it it's, it's interesting. That's the best way I can put it. It's an yeah, interesting it's super process. Interesting, bro. Like, any weird cut and sew, I'm going to pass. Like, I don't know. I don't want to have mm -hmm. to deal with that return process. I don't know what the fuck that shit's going to be like. Let me, let me just get this graphic to you. I already know fits. Well, yeah, I think that, like, I even, even everything has, like, been, like, returning stuff is, like, slow. Like, I had ordered some things from Nordstrom, and I had, uh, and then I returned it. I, I shipped it out, you know, like, you know, via their prepaid return label. Uh, I, I mailed it, I think, at the end of May. And it was like the middle of June and it was still like in process to like be like received by Nordstrom. So, you know, we're talking, I'm like, you know, I had to call them and give them the tracking number. And it's like a month later and they're like, oh, we still haven't received it, but we're going to give you the credit for what you purchased. So, you know, things like that, like even, even dealing with like stock X, uh, I sold a t-shirt and normally I, ship it out on a Monday, they get it on, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, they give my money by Wednesday or Thursday, and we're good to go. And it's been like over a week, and it's still just, you know, backed up with everything. So I don't even really want to think about all the Cactus Jack stuff I ordered at like the beginning of this shit. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna see it for like two years, I don't think. 
Oh, yeah. I know, I know I've said it before, but rappers need to figure out how to ship their shit because all the rapper merch shit is always like three months behind everything. There's, I have friends that bought Frank Ocean's like vinyl sh- from that last release or whatever. They still haven't gotten it. It's like four years old now? It's, I have no idea. But it's crazy. I'm like, yo, you ever get that Frank shit? They're like, nah. Oh, is that the, the – yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It's like it came with a vinyl and a magazine. Yeah, it, was like, it wasn't like that long ago, but it was a while enough ago where it's like, you should have got that by now. I don't know. Blonde came out in 2016. No, it was it was after it wasn't that. Oh, shit. it was after that. Oh, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. I don't even really know what it was, but I was just talking like they still haven't gotten that shit. Rappers always suck with shipping shit. Um, but moving on. Um, I don't know if there's anything really to talk about here, but right before we hit record, I saw uh, drops by Jay post that Supreme's gonna do something with Smurfs, and I laughed out loud. Fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Wait, Is you. That- you're a big Smurf fan, Luke? Yeah, obviously, <laughs> Smurfs is the inspiration for all anime that is currently being streamed. Oh, yeah, like, y- yeah, you would be in a Smurfette. See, we wouldn't, exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we wouldn't be, we, you know, Smurfette walked so that fucking, <laughs> I don't know, these big titty anime bitches could run. <laughs> true. Just... Lawrence, Lawrence is, is shaking his head. <laughs> Lars is disapproving. Chris can't say words because he's laughing so hard. This is my. This is our dynamic, guys. <laughs> uh, look, I just can't, like. I don't get how they choose this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not actually excited about this. Like, I am indifferent to this entirely. What are they, are they just gonna make the Smurfs red? I don't know. Just the hats. They're just gonna. Oh, maybe they're just doing beanies or something. Are those even beanies? I don't even, like, but some guy was just like, yo, what about Smurfs? And someone else was like, like yeah, yeah obs- I, remember, I remember Smurfs. That's obscure dumb enough to get fucking 14-year-olds to I'm buy. I'm telling you, some guy in the office was like, exactly, Smurfette. <laughs> 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 so that the chick from Ghost in the Shell could run. <laughs> Oh, but it's just like, Luke's going to be like tying in Akira to Smurfette somehow. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, let's have. Let, oh, sorry, got it. No, I was. If you could take this somewhere else, go. I just <laughs> go. I, go I, didn't, I just didn't want to not mention it because it's like <laughs> it's right up our alley. Yeah. Well, no, I was gonna say uh, I was actually gonna transition to music. Uh, I feel like uh, there was uh, Cardi B and Megan. Oh. Ryan, uh, oh yeah. a, a, is that uh, what you're calling that music, Lawrence? <laughs> I'm calling soft- that audio porn. That that's, shit is <laughs> ridiculous. A so- softcore porno. That's what. They Bro, dropped. I was like, I've never heard. Look, you got Little Kim from back. Like they, uh, there was some foul shit said back back then. But I've mm-hmm. never heard two women talk like they did. <laughs> on that yeah. audio porn, that they, shit is ridiculous. They left yeah. no room for the Holy Spirit on that track. Um, yeah, and it's been catching a lot of flack from conservatives. They've been uh, <laughs> <See>? <laughs> conservatives have been giving that song a lot of shit. Uh, they are, um, you know, I, I don't know. I think people are trying to make it sound like it's a groundbreaking, revolutionary song with the, in terms of the visuals and things like that. And it's like, I, I feel like I feel like this this has been done many a time before. It, it's just the it's just the powers that be that are marketing this song. Or Yeah, I mean, like, it, you want to talk about, like, the hype boxes to know that something's going to be a banger, like with a shoe yeah. release? I mean, this is, like, the complete version of that for music. You got Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, mm-hmm. like, that, that, those two alone. Cardi B with mm-hmm. pasties. Mm-hmm. Bro. What I will say is I think it's dope that, you know, for, like, women's empowerment and shit like that, I feel like, you know, you hear a lot of women who are empowered, like, you know, they, what, WAP, like, you know, it's, like, that's dope. But I feel like, you know, we, at the end of the day, like, I mean, dudes glorify getting money and, and killing people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how rappers rap. Like, I'm getting money, I'm, I'm fucking your girl like and chicks are you know they like all right we'll be at the other end which is like yo we you know it is what it is we, yeah. we suck mad dick and we're happy about it <laughs> so yo, I that far but yeah I get what you're that's kind of what they were saying though that's kind of what they were saying cardi they're- was basically like saying like fuck my throat i was like what is happening here yeah Bro, i think 
she was saying she was saying things that she didn't even know the words for. She was like the dangly shit in the back of my throat. <laughs> I'm like, could you not at least look that up? Yeah, I maybe mean, he doesn't well, rap, rap as well, Chris. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think like I said, shit. Little Kim used to say, you know, Foxy Brown. All of these, you know. Yeah. It, you know, it comes. You know, everyone's not Lauren Hill. You know, and yeah. and and so I think it is what it is. I'm not. What? Yo, just bringing up Lauren Hell in this conversation is so funny. But actually, no. yeah, some of these people actually show up on time for their concerts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I mean, you know, <laughs> it is uh it is what it is. But I think it was, you know, it's an interesting song, to say the least. And uh, yes, interesting is one way to put that, Lawrence. Uh, yeah, very interesting. I was very interested. <laughs> yeah, Luke was interested. <laughs> Luke was, um, I've never heard of that. I didn't, I, I heard that. I was like, yeah, I know Luke is listening to this right I'm, now. I'm like, woman empowerment, man. That's everything <laughs> Lauren said, but creepier. <laughs> no, dope, it is a dope song though. And actually no, it's, it's, I gotta, song, yeah. I gotta give Cardi some um, credit there on some of the wordplay she had. Cause I was like re- listening a couple times mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, Cardi like rapped on this. Yeah. yeah really mm-hmm. good. And I love the, the, the cadence switch. So it's like Cardi was like kind of slow and like making sure like her words were clear. But then Meg was like double time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like overall good structure, Sean. That was great. Kylie um, was in the video. <laughs> Kylie was in the video. I, I mean, that's what the YouTube comments said. That's literally what they said. Mm-hmm. Kylie was here. Yes. Uh, I did see a petition that has like 50,000 signatures to remove her. I don't know what fucking people think that it funny idea. If it's like a joke, like I get it. But if anyone signs that really hoping they remove her, you're an idiot. It's like, remember when, like, I don't know, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, we, uh, the thing was just to hate Justin Bieber Mm -hmm. blindly, just to hate him Uh, for just existing as a human being. uh, Yeah. Yeah, and that's so. So some people just do that to Kylie, and there's other that's people true. that are like, the same thing would be like it's all the same. Just like switch out the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we're we're kind of on the dismount slide yeah. here. Um, Luke, I know you've wanted to talk about this for a little while, just to switch gears, but like, explain your obsession with this bucket hat mask, bro. The possibilities, bro. The possibilities here are endless now. Okay, why why are we stopping here? at a fucking bucket hat like first of all what do we think of it um you know what creative idea uh functionally i see its purpose uh i'm like not mad if you want to go on a safari during covid right exactly no but like a desert trip actually yeah i mean like they basically just like took what the bucket hat was and like because usually they have like that flap to protect your neck and shit they just added to the front like i mean the guy looks stupid as hell but uh, it's like not a bad idea okay now look up snow troopers from Star Wars. Snow. Only Luke can get me to Google fucking Star Wars shit on our sneaker but podcast. You gotta trust me. You gotta uh, trust me. <laughs> Snow Troopers, Star Just Wars. Just look up Snow Troopers, yeah. Now look at these guys. The Empire's <laughs> upon us, guys. That's what I'm saying. The Empire is upon us. We should all be watching the fuck out. Hilarious. Oh, I kind of do want one of these helmets, though. Just yeah, like a regular. <laughs> Yeah, bro. The those are the from the new movies. The the helmets from the like the, the helmet designs. They were like, we need to sell toys, so they just designed the shit out of everybody's armor. Yeah, of course. Yeah, man. Look at this so, fit. Wow, look that, bro. Look at that fucking fit. Look, look at, at this that fit. fit. Look at the drip. You can get that for thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars drip. But here's the funny thing: there are people that walk around looking like that, like off-white fucking snowtroopers. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it's, it's true. I'm like, yeah, we can make fun of it all we want. We know we've physically seen people walking down Soho that look like that. <laughs> I'm just saying that the, the imagination. It's is Rick fucking... Owens, though. It's not like. But uh... exactly, it's Rick Owens. What, what are we, I don't even, what team are they on? What do you call that shit? What side? The Empire? Re, the Empire? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 So Rick know. Empire instead of Rick Owens. So what, Lawrence, how do you feel about a, a bucket hat mask? I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. I, I, I if it, if the shit fly, though, I, I fucks with it, but I don't know if I would, man. It's Lawrence is trying right so hard not to make fun of you, Luke. I can just yeah, see it in his to, eyes. He's, you think I'm going to buy it? I'm not going to buy it. I, I'm just saying, like, look at somebody. Somebody used their brain, and this is what came out. 
I mean, we've touched upon it a little bit here, but like mask couture or like mask fashion, whatever you're, however you want to do it, is now officially a part of our I space. Mean, it it's, is it's officially a part of American culture now. It's no, it's world culture now. Like mask is a, masks are things well, now. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This has been a thing in Asia for fucking. No, for sure. Yeah, it was just Asian shit. Already. But now, and, like, and y'all laughed at us. Y'all laughed at all of us. Well, yeah, because we were like, what are these Asian people doing? <laughs> but we didn't know. We, Vampire team, know, the mask. But no, I mean, it's it's a part of the it's a part of tapping before you leave the house. Now it's wallet keys mask. Like right, like mm-hmm. you should. What do you guys have any ideas of like? mass construction that you would you would like to see done i mean i've already made ma- i can't say some of them aren't right. out yet so i can't say yeah, who right. i've made masks for but i can tell you i've made every kind of mask like i mean there's even the one that i did for the soho hoodie that i love that's my favorite mask i like i don't know where it is whatever but that that's the shit right there mm-hmm. all that shit is dope anything I that you can kind of customize and make your own i feel like that's the way to go like wearing these regular ones is like fine but I would invest in a mask for sure because now it's a staple. Yeah, I want a mask with my face on, like on, like on the side, like you know, like my <laughs> face and shit. <laughs> like Two dead ass. Faces. Like yes. so, like, so like Chris, pull up that mask real quick. Which one? Oh, like, the- no, just pull up the one you was just holding. Oh, oh, oh. So like on the on the left, it would be my face, and on the right, it would be my face. Like it would be. It would be <laughs> <laughs> like I've marches. seen, yo, people have ordered that. They get like sublimated, like nylon ones where they just get like, I've seen crazy ones where it's like come on f- your, like a girl's yeah, face. Yeah, 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 yeah wild yeah, yeah. shit. But people get of their own face. It's very funny. That's what I'm about to do. I want to get one of those, man, for real. That's I don't know where, where you can order that at, but if you can find that, I'll take the selfie of me and then they could superimpose <laughs> it on both Hell sides yeah. of the fucking mask and I'm with the shit show. I'm with right. it. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely like, I've been trying to pay attention to mask shit just because, like, it's so prevalent in, like, not only my world, but just, like, the world in general. And, like, mm-hmm. we should make a list of good masks for people to look into because I know Under Armour is making a great mask for runners. Right. I mean, Nike, mm-hmm. obviously. All these major brands are going to have good ones, but, like, uh, Adidas has a good one. I, honestly, the Under Armour ones are the most impressive as far as its functionality. Yeah, they're but, very functional. I've yeah, seen. like, crazy shit. Because even my mom, my mom's, like, you know, she's a hairdresser, and she, like, fucking hates the mask shit, and, like, it makes it difficult. She's also, like, 60, so she's just, like, fed up with bullshit in general. You know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. like, I gotta deal with this shit now. So, like, <laughs> yeah, that Under Armour mask um, is really fucking good. But, yeah, we should do that. We should try to, like, get some lists together for that and try to point, mm-hmm. point out some I'm good with ones. It. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with it. I'm gonna put on all of the fucking, all of the Asian ones that you see all the time. The weird shark teeth one, yeah. vampire one, frog face. Those are the really weird, weird ones. You want to watch out for those people. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, tr- let's try to get into these. I don't want to squeeze any topics in, but final thoughts here. Uh, before I go, do you guys have any last things you want to get to? I have nothing. No, I got nothing. I just want to shout out Reebok and Iverson for this James Harden collab they're doing. So, like, Iverson and Reebok literally made a – James Harden collaborated. They took the Iverson model and based around uh, Harden's first shoe. Yeah, you are um, excited about this as a Bach boy. Uh, obviously, as a Bach boy, I'm hype. Iverson hype. Um, but no, going back to the PJ Tucker thing, it's just like interesting that there's going to be these triple labels and players and like personalities all wrapped around one shoe. I know Reebok is Iverson. Listen, if corporations but- can be people, people can be corporations. So I don't see how. I think triple labels with Jay said it first. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman, you know? So like, yeah, I get that totally. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. I saw Lawrence's, uh, you know, a little shimmer. Not, there. He like, he was the like, way, the, the, the way he said it, it was like, it was like, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Like it was like, very, like <laughs> non-rapper. Like I didn't want to fuck. I don't want to talk. I don't, I don't want to fuck this up. I don't no, no. That's, that's how that's how he like, said it. I just didn't, I don't, I didn't do it. With, like a bitch. <laughs> nah, he said, that's the way, that's the way Chris said it. It was very, uh, <laughs> so, you know, you guys suck. Man, no. Chris, you just going to take that? Um, I, um, I, what am I going to say? Um, He's not wrong. That's all I'm doing on Instagram. <laughs> nah, you are you're doing a good job at it too, you fucking little asshole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but I, that is cool. So, like, going back to the Yeezy Derrick Rose thing, this thing is cool. I, I'm just, like, looking forward to more of this type shit because this also tells yeah. great stories. Yes. Um, so, shout out to that. Babe is doing some shit with Clarks. I don't understand, but shout out to those guys. That's going to be They're cool. They're doing some shit. They're doing babe shit. They're doing babe shit. I mean, what are I they mean, doing? 
Um, they really but, are like the lunch table in the like the Asian lunch table in the corner where you're like, what are they doing? Never mind. I just like Clark's is such a weird thing for anyone to touch. Like mm-hmm. without Raekwon, I don't know if Clark's would be anywhere. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and yet here we are now. Also, shout out to Raekwon. He's doing Purple Tape 3, and it was like the 25th anniversary. And actually, I did a spray ground bag a while ago that was supposed to be for the 20th anniversary. Just came out now. So that was cool that I, that came out and uh, yes. that, you know, Raekwon was like posting shit I made. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I'm the only one with a hypeless heat this week, right? Yes. Yes. All right. My hypeless heat <clears throat> uh, is, uh, is a doozy. I'm just, I was just like confused about its existence and me never hearing about it. So Anta, which is like a leading type of Asian shoe company, they're out in Asia. They got like Rondo, Garnett, uh, Clay Thompson, this being a Clay Thompson shoe. Yo, they literally did a Dragon Ball Super Clay Thompson Goku shoe. They did a whole fucking collection. This whole co- this collection is actually just nuts in general because like the, the sheer amount of what is in here yeah the amount of stuff that came out mm-hmm. as far as like dragon ball being like a super coveted fucking title because everything that they get is just money but like the amount of shit that came out the fucking the crazy ass colorways on the shoes bro and, they probably did 20 different shoes and and there's yeah, like mad a, shirts just do a filter for the shoes alone just to see those those are like there's like 14 shoes yeah wait with men's shoes 28 god damn that it, that's a lot yeah for a one collab like yo that's a, that license deal was wild that yeah i just can't believe i never heard of it because it's i'm i'm keeping up with basketball shit i love dragon ball super i love sneaker i look at the asian market all the time because you guys know i'm watching Li Ning and some other guys who come up like this is completely slid under my radar mm-hmm. and Although the Clay Thompson ones, like, is my pick for the hypeless heat. Like, it's not even the strongest shoe in here. I just like that one because it's base Goku with Clay Thompson, a current player, and that's a model I would actually wear. Some of this other shit I don't know about, but, like. Yeah, some of this shit is a little too futuristic even for me. Mm-hmm. Bro, they have all the forms. Like, they have a Goku base. They have a Goku Super Saiyan. They have a Goku, a Goku Ultra Instinct. A Goku uh, Kaioken. Blue. Yeah, and blue. Shit is wild. It's fucking um, nuts. I wanted to show the the Master Roshis. Oh, yeah, I these mean, ones right look here. Look at how fucking nuts these are. I think the trunks are the best ones. Yes. Because they're, like, the best palette. But, like, these are, like, somebody was, like, fuck it. <laughs> Just put all <laughs> the fucking colors. They, they looked at his jacket because, like, the character has this, like, fucking wild print jacket. And they were, like, I'm not doing any more work. That's it. Yeah, crazy, man. Hilarious. But uh, um, if, if you're going to pick that one, I guess my hypos heat will be the Trunks's. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> Two hypos heat out of the same collection. Uh, let, me, let me see if we'll... Wait, where is this shit? No, okay, we won't do two from the same collection, but the listeners will know I tried. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. You did. Um, yeah, where did that go? Well, whatever. Wait, oh yeah, there Trunks. They are, right yeah, there. these ones. Those ones are nice, yeah. They're very that, clean. Yeah. Yeah, man. But all right. The most approachable shoe out of the bunch. That's it this week. Um, you know, you can follow us at uh, Sub Podcast NYC on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I am at Not That Cheney. Lawrence is at LZD325. Luke is at Trevisus. Um, the Discord, come to the Discord, guys. Just yeah. like hop in, join in. We're going to start paying attention to questions in there. Um, like, it, it's growing gradually and like i'm just so happy we have this nice little community of people that like all fuck with it's, each other it's a real fucking fun time everybody mm-hmm. everybody gels really well somebody dropped a entire pattern textbook did you see yeah. that yeah yeah so, an entire textbook for like anybody who wants to read it it's so sick there's a there's a bunch of cool stuff in there i can't wait to like I'm going to wait for a little while just because I don't want anyone to get mad at me. But like shit from back in the day that I did that, like, like people's marketing decks and stuff. I want to share all that shit. Yeah, like, dude. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a couple things I put on the Patreon just for those guys to look at. And like, I mean, I'll get yelled at for one of these times at me sharing something. But like, I got some gold mines that I want to share with everybody in there. So join up and eventually like that. You'll see all that shit. You'll get pieces of history that you missed and maybe didn't understand. And, and we're just having a good time in there. That's it. Yeah. 
But all right, boys. Um, shout out to you, Luke, for doing that, Mike. I got my first show tonight. I don't know how it's going to be. I'm on some rooftop. I've uh, never done comedy on a roof, so this is going to be cool. Oh, it's fun. fun. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, you'll have fun. Yeah, yeah fun. it'll be cool. And uh, I mean, all right, guys, next week, uh, until then, you know, Discord. Peace. All right, peace, guys. So.